hey guys welcome back to my youtube channel uh today guys we gonna start uh, with a new series uh, where we gonna talk about the automation of the various commvault task using the commvault apis so uh we you will in 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 coming up time you will be seeing a lot of videos uh, getting uploaded from the automation perspective where we will try to automate few of the tasks using the commvault apis which you can use later on to combine and create more complicated script and you can try to automate various tasks that you have been doing on a day to day basis so we're going to start today where we will just check the prerequisite what are the prerequisite what are the all things that we need to install in order to uh, if you want to use the uh, like if you want to call the commvault apis and all so what we're going to do is today we will start with all the prerequisite so guys <clears throat> what we're going to do is we are going to call the commvault apis using the python all the uh, videos and uh, discussion that you will see will be done using the python okay so even if you're not expert on the python that's okay like it's a very basic understanding that we require and anyhow uh, like i will be just telling you all the prerequisite and uh, you can just copy whatever the uh, format that we're going to use for the commvault uh, python script that we're going to create you can use the same one so what we are going to do is we are going to talk about the what are the things that we need to install uh, before we can start with the automation. What are the prerequisite in short that we need to complete? OK, the first thing is that you need to install the Python. OK, you can install the Python either locally on your com serve if you're comfortable or you can even install the Python on any other server as well. Uh, in your environment from where the com serve is reachable they should be on the same network in short so you can use a server a com server where you can locally install the python or you can use any other server now we're going to focus in this uh, session or in these videos we're going to focus from the windows perspective that's the easiest one which is available so we're going to install the python on a windows server in my case, we're going to uh, install the Python locally on the com serve itself. So guys, I do have a server available with the name uh, like uh, which is acting as a com server. Now, in this particular server, in this com server, uh, I have uh, went to a portal called python.org. Uh, there I have been uh, went to the downloads. And then in there, I am in the Windows section where all the latest version of the Python is being available that you can download. You can see that latest version that we have is currently 3.13. So you can just click on that and it will download the binaries related to the Python. And then you can execute the files that is being downloaded. It will start the installation of your Python. Once the Python installation get complete, then uh, you can consider that uh, you know uh, the installation has been uh, completed that is one of the way uh, but in some cases we have seen that this uh, uh, you know this url might be blocked in your environment you might not able to access that so guys in commvault you can even download these partic particular uh, python uh, modules or i would say the python itself uh, using the commvault uh, software as well so guys, if you have noticed that uh, when you start the installation for the Commvault packages and when you reach to the window called select windows packages, okay. So in there, in the, in the tool section, there is something called developer SDK Python. Okay. If you select this one, this is going to install the modules related to the Python uh, for the Commvault, but along with that Python will be also get installed. So if you want to install the Python using the Commvault packages, which is the most safest way also available that also you can do it by selecting this option and you can just click on next and keep on going forward and you can install the python using the commvault package as well now once the python is being installed in your environment installation get complete you can validate the installation okay uh, what you can do is you can simply uh, go to the command line and what you can do is you can simply try to put the command as python and if python is installed in there you will get the version of the python that has been installed in my server i have already installed the python uh, version called 3.9 so you will be able to see that guys sometime you might face a problem 
where it can just give you the error saying that Python is not a recognized command. Like though you have installed the Python in your environment, but still it can give you the error that Python is not in a recognized uh, command. Okay. So for that, what we need to do is we need to work on the variable addition. Okay. Path addition under the variable. What does it mean? See, uh, Python must be installed on some specific directory. Like if I go to go back in my environment, might be Python is installed in somewhere in the windows, uh, program files somewhere, uh, you know, over here, the uh, Python has been installed. This is over here. You can see Python 39 and you can see that Python dot uh, exe file coming up in there. So guys, uh, if you have just done the installation, now what you need to do is you need to uh, uh, what you need to do is you need to browse to that particular directory before you can check this Python command. Like what you need to do is you need to say CD C colon slash program file slash Python 39. And once you are there inside that directory, then you will run the command Python. It will work. But if you are on some other directory, like you can see that I was on C users Brahmvi something and in that one, I try to run the Python command. It might give you the error that Python is not a recognized command. So because because on that location, there might be uh, no Python file that was located. So if you want to execute the Python command being on any directory, like I was on some different directory and still it gave me the version. So what you need to do is you need to tell the uh, so like the, the OS that where this Python is been installed so that whenever I run a command Python from any of the directory, it always uh, look in that specific path only where which I define that this is where the, uh, you know, Python has been installed. So for that guys, what you can do is you need to add this path into the variable. So what you can do is you can click on search and you can type something called variable. It says edit the system environment variable. You click on that and go to the tab under the advanced option, go to the environment variables. And once you go to the environment variables in there, guys, uh, you will be able to see in the system variables or the variables for the specific user. What you can do is you can add the path for your uh, Python as well, where the Python has been installed. So what you can do is you can click on new and then you can uh, put the variable name, anything like Python, something like this. And then you have to define the location where the Python has been installed. So in our case, it has been installed on C program files uh, slash Python 39. Uh, something so that path you have to define in there once you define that particular particular path click on okay and that will be visible over it so as if now you can see that under the path one of the variable i have already added so you can see i have already added the c program files python 39 path and that's the reason why i was able to execute the command from anywhere like when i put the python it was uh, showing uh, the Python version uh, from uh, that particular specific directory as well. So you need to add that particular path over here. There is no reboot or anything that is required for the addition. It's uh, like there is no impact on any of your production working even on the Commodore as an application by doing so. Now, <laughs> once you are done with that, there is one more thing that you need to do guys. And that is you need to install the uh, PIP command, okay, pip command. So you need to install the pip because this pip will be used later on to uh, download or install many of the Python modules later on. So using the pip, you like pip will be used later on to download the various Python modules that we're gonna use it, okay? So for that, what you can do is, guys, there is a URL given. You can just copy this particular URL and you can open this particular URL on any of the location or where you want to, of course, install the Python or where you are, you know, doing all the installation. Once you open this URL, you will be taken to the space. You can save this file. So you can right click and you can say save as. And uh, this is the name of the file, get dash pip. So let's say I am want to keep it somewhere. Uh, you can keep it on any of the drive not mandatory that you have to keep it on the C drive only on the uh, Python installation directory. So let's say in the D drive, I will create a new folder and I would say uh, pip something like this and then open this folder inside that folder. I will save this particular file. Okay. Now, once you have this particular file saved, now what you can do is uh, you can just open a PowerShell in uh, your environment uh, like on this server. 
where you're installing. So once you open the PowerShell, uh, what you can do, you can browse to that location. So we know that we have installed it inside the dfib drive. And if you say directory, it can show you what all files you have. So I have this file get pip.py. So now what you can do is you can install this pip by using the command called python space get hyphen pip the name of that particular file and hit enter now once you hit enter this is going to execute this particular command and the if there is uh, uh this pip is already installed so you can see there was some version of pip that was already installed it will be uninstalled and now this latest version of the uh, pip uh, which you have got it to this file will be installed and now you can see that successfully install the pip 25.5 okay so this will be installed and once this has been installed now you can validate that as well okay so you can say pip version which is going to show you the version of the pip which has been there on this one okay so this is the version of the pip which is lying on the uh, on, on your server now once you have all these particular prerequisite uh, downloaded like you have python install you have pip install then you have added the uh, python uh, installation directory into the variables now you can call the commvault apis using this python okay and this is what we're going to discuss as if now i'm going to give a basic introduction about the commvault apis okay so guys we have the uh, Commvault APIs available, uh, which is being provided by the Commvault officially, which we can use to execute various uh, commands in the uh, environment, or I would say, which can be used for performing various operations. Okay, so this uh, API stands for Application Programming Interface. The full form for the API is application programming interface. So it is kind of some operations, predefined operation that you can perform using a very small command. You are not required to know about the programming and all that that has been done for that particular command that has been running in the background. But using a very small command, you can actually do the lot of operations. OK, so uh, what is the difference between the APIs? and the command line we do have a command line uh, also available see command line is something which you need to execute locally on the server like if you want to do something on a com server you have to open you have to log in into the com server open the command prompt of powershell and run the command in there locally but you cannot execute them remotely when i say remotely you cannot take any third server install the python like uh, open the command prompt and run the commands in there that is uh, limited in the uh, command uh, when when we use the uh, you know command prompt or the command uh, which has been available command line which has been available but using the api we can do it remotely as well we can execute the command remotely okay uh, in many of the cases most of the cases it has been done within the network but in some cases we can even call the apis or execute the command even over the public ip that is also been uh, possible in the uh, apis Okay, now in the uh, before we can I can show you what all APIs are available in Commvault. In the Commvault APIs, uh, like in the APIs, we have a methods available. Methods means kind of you can see uh, you can call them as an operation that you can perform. There are kind of four operation or I would say four methods of the APIs available: get, post, put, and delete. Get means if you want to get some information. OK, uh, like you want to read, you want to perform some read operation. Like, for example, you want to read the list of the clients. OK, you want to get the list of the backup history or something like this. Post means when you want to create something, you want to create some uh, uh, components in the com world, then you're going to use the post command. Put if you want to update some settings, for example, if you want to update the storage policy configuration or sub client properties you want to update or uh, something like this and then delete method where if you want to delete the component so these are the four methods that is been available that you can perform now coming back in the python like what oh, sorry uh, the apis what are the various commvault apis available so guys for that you can what you can do is you can uh, very simply uh, what you can do is in the browser okay you can just go to the google simple and type commvault apis okay 
Now, once you click on there, you will see one portal coming up with the name api.comworld.com. And if you click on that, you will be taken to a page which says Comworld REST API documentation and say get started. Now, once you click on get started in there, you can see that methods has been defined, what methods has been doing what uh, that you will be able to see. And then you can see that, uh, you know, the response is being expected in the form of XML or JSON, like uh, the commands or the input that you're going to provide will be expected in the form of XML or the JSON format. We'll talk about it later on. Now on the top, you can click on core APIs. And once you click on core APIs, these are the basic APIs, which has been available over here. Okay. Over here, these like there are two categories of the API that is being created. Okay. One is core API, which is uh, to configure and manage the backup of your workload. Okay. And then you have the partner APIs to configure and manage your NS, uh, MSP tenant uh, and all that. We will we'll talk about it later on. Okay. But yeah, you can see that these are the many operations APIs that has been available. For example, uh, there is an API is available to authenticate to log in into the Commvault environment. Okay. And then for example, uh, there are uh, protects related uh, APIs available. For example, if you go to the databases and then um, any database like Microsoft SQL database, and in that, if you want to do any operations like uh, at the instance level, you want to add the, uh, what do you call it? Uh, you, you, you want to get the MS, uh, you want to configure the backup for a new instance, or you want to extract the properties of the existing instance, or you want to delete the instance that you're backing up today, or you want to configure or you want to perform the restoration of that particular databases, all that will operations will be available or that we will be able to do. So in the in short, using the APIs, most of the tasks can be automated guys. Okay. Now what we're going to do is in the next top in the in the next video we're going to talk about how we can actually uh, you know execute any of these particular apis we'll try to automate some of the tasks or we will try to recall these particular apis and do some of the tasks remotely using these particular apis which you can actually use later on uh, you know for uh, combining and creating your own uh, you know high level scripts and all that so yeah today this is what i want to give as an introduction this is what i want to tell you as the basics now in the next class we'll start with playing with these particular apis that how you can control these particular apis and all thank you